The Minnesota Fighting Vikings have one of the best offensive tackle duos in the National Football League in rising star Christian Derrissaw and Brian O'Neill. And yes, uh, Derrissaw had a couple of concussions last year, missed a couple of games. Brian O'Neill's come back from Achilles, but should be good to go. And yes, Garrett Bradbury... He gets a lot of flack from fans, rightfully so, for the way that he played the first three years of his career, but really got it together last year. He was a top 10-ish adjacent center last season, was extended, was a smart move, and fully understand what's going on. But despite all of that, Kirk Cousins uh, still had a career high in sacks last year, 46, and a career high in pressures of 263, and that was not... That was not good. That was no bueno. And still, the Vikings had a top 10 offense and Kirk Cousins had a career year. Uh, but one of the main reasons why Kirk Cousins had a lot of hits, even though pain don't hurt, was the, the guard play of Ezra Cleveland and Ed Ingram, uh, the rookie coming out of LSU. Now, there are some growing pains, sure. Ed Ingram did improve towards the end of last season. Ezra, like we said a bunch of times, is a left tackle being jammed in at left guard. Will things get better? They had better because uh, the offensive line, as they go, so goes the Vikings offense, so goes the team, and as goes the offensive line, it comes down to uh, Ezra and Ed. And Andy Benoit, over at the 33rd team, the infamous Andy Benoit, did up the uh, NFL's uh, each NFL team's biggest X-factor entering the season, and he listed Ezra and Ingram. Blah, 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 Vikings won some games, blah, 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 blah. Despite having an, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all season long, the film showed the type of consistent pinpoint of weaknesses that can torpedo a season in crunch time, and that's exactly what happened. Almost, it's like fourth and eight. Uh, Kirk was pressured because of uh, of uh, a defender getting right through the gap uh, right near as a Cle- Cleveland, but no big deal. Uh, despite having invested a 2022 round pick in left guard Ezra Cleveland, even though he was he was supposed to be the left tackle of the future, but then you got Darius on 2021, uh, and a 2022 second rounder in right guard and Ingram Minnesota constantly had to overcome deficient guard play as luck would have it in the wild card round they face a Giants defense that was uniquely uh, formidable inside with stalwart line Williams and uh, also you yeah, had Lawrence so yeah it, it was not a great matchup for the Vikings advantage up front Giants, blah, 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 blah. While Cleveland and Ingram both have the mobility to perform better in Minnesota's wide zone rushing attack, uh, the bigger concern is their vulnerability and pass protection. Because, yeah, they're, they're perfectly fine in run blocking last year. Pass protection, uh, that's where the issues were. Uh, physical and even mental mistakes have been far too common with both players, which is why Minnesota gave up the NFL's worst, with the worst, a six-plus quarterback hits per game, by far the most in the league ahead of Denver, and nearly double the league average. So, again, Kirk... <sighs> Knock on all the wood. Stay healthy, bro. Th- th- that's it, man. Uh, many of these big hits, uh, many of these big, uh, many of these were big hits. Kirk Cousins, for all his miles, ups and downs, has been the war- one of the more courageous quarterbacks in the pocket. But the Vikings are to get better in 2023. Cousins must require the courage far less often. And, yeah, last year. Uh, so, they were perfectly fine against uh, uh, in the run game. But Ezra... And Ingram, they, they weren't good. So pressure is 55 and 63, respectively. Uh, and out of 54 qualifying guards, uh, Ezra was third from the bottom, and Ed Ingram was the bottom of the league. And then in terms of sacks allowed, Ezra gave up five, which ain't good, 43rd. Uh, and then Ed Ingram was once again the bottom of the league, uh, giving up 11 sacks. And also he stepped on Kirk's foot three times. So uh, also leading the league. Mm. But uh, Ed Ingram, you, you did notice that, he started off horrifically bad, uh, but he ended up playing every single offensive snap for the Vikings last year. He did get appreciable, uh, appreciably better uh, as the season progressed, so I, I think that there is hope for him moving forward. And Ezra, I don't know. It, 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 it always just feels like Ezra has been playing out of position, and will that magically get better in year four uh, as in a, he's in a contract year? I don't know, uh, but yeah, the Vikings offensive line, I mean, they do have a solid five, and there's a reason why offensive line coach Chris Cooper and Wes Phillips and Kevin O'Connell and Quasi Dofa Mensa, they decide not to invest any free, uh, free agent capital or any draft capital in the offensive line, and they basically ran it back with the O-line that they had last year, re-signing Bradbury, uh, bringing back uh, Blake Brandle as an exclusive rights free agent, re-signing Schlutman and Ole Udo, as well as restructuring Chris Reed, so they have faith. With the five up front and continuity and chemistry will hopefully win the day, but they got to get better. They got to get better because Kirk, he's been durable, but let's not test it. Let's not test it this year, bro. Mm. Uh, but your thoughts on our thoughts. Uh, Vikings X-Factors in 2023. Guards Ezra Cleveland at Ingram. Agree, disagree. Otherwise, let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo, but to next time, Skull Production Value.